Hi, Natalie. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here to connect with you. Yes. Yeah. We're looking forward um, to having you on and um, I can't wait for you to kind of share everything that you've been up to. I think we're going to have a great conversation about kind of how you bring two worlds together. Um, It's something that I'm familiar with and have experience in too. So um, I'm looking forward to our chat. What I would love to do to start is, could you share with our listeners what you're currently doing um, with your IHP certification? And then um, we can kind of tie it into maybe how you got there. You can share a little bit about your story uh, after that. Yes. So I recently completed my level one of IHP. And so I have been able to integrate that with the clients that I had been seeing before and kind of in the process of finishing level one, as well as some new. And I have moved into level two. I'm kind of at the beginning of level two right now, but definitely excited to be able to get through that and and be able to provide that as well. Um, Over the last couple of years, though, I've been doing what I would just call nutrition and lifestyle coaching. And so I was using other certifications that I had in the past that would help me just integrate certain habits with clients around their nutrition and lifestyle habits so that we could improve on whatever areas they needed to improve on. I also do a little bit of personal training still. Uh, That's something that I did for many years. And so I have a few clients that I see mainly focusing on mobility and recovery techniques. And I teach some mobility and recovery classes around the Austin area as well. That's great. Yeah. I've talked to so many personal trainers uh, that kind of move from the personal training space to IHP, but still have, you know, their, their clients. And I also have a personal training background, obviously um, Dr. Cabral does. That's actually how Mm -hmm. um, I met him. I was personal training. I'm in his studio 15 years ago, I think it was. Um, But it's such a, an important kind of like gap um, that needs to be bridged oftentimes between, okay, like the physical aspects of someone who wants to get aesthetic results and bringing, being able to bring all of the knowledge that um, IHP gives, whether it's lifestyle, de-stress protocol, you know, the nutrition aspect, all of that. It's such like a, an amazing complete package. So we have so many um, personal trainers that, that do the program. Yes. I feel like it was a natural progression of just like wanting to learn more. And then the more you learn, wanting to implement more, And then you're kind of going down the path of like, okay, I can only do so much in an hour of personal training with someone. I kind of need more time to talk to them outside of this hour. And so that yeah, eventually just led me to being like, I want to do more of the integrative health coaching and be able to have more flexibility with my time and schedule also moving into marriage and trying to build a family. And that was something that also interested me in that work was like, I'm able to really help people and get really deep and get to the root cause of kind of what they're feeling. But then I can also maybe travel a bit more or, you know, make my own schedule a bit more. And so um, it's really worked out well for me. I'm super happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Such a, such a great point. Uh, and what were you doing uh, prior to as far as um, your kind of personal story as to what may have got you really curious about IHP? Obviously, we're already in the health and wellness space. But um, if you wanted to share a little bit about your story. Yes. So. I feel like my story goes back to, I I was personal training at the time. I was full-time coaching and I was living a pretty healthy lifestyle. I was in a happy relationship. Everything is great with friends and family. I loved my job. I was working at a gym here in Austin called On It. And it was a little less stressful than other personal training jobs I had in the past because they did offer like health benefits and a base salary and then commission on top of that. So even that structure felt less stressful. But in reality, I was working from like 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. often, you know, seven days a week and was kind of go, go, go all the time. You're kind of everyone's like hype person, you know. And so I think not really recognizing that I was probably burning myself out a bit um, because I was, you know, eating well, trying to get my sleep um, there. You know, I was focusing on sleep quality. I was doing daily walks. I was doing meditation. But Eventually, I just started to notice that something was off. I started to feel a lot more anxiety, specifically at nighttime, like before bed, I would just get really anxious. And I was noticing maybe like a couple weeks at a time of really, I just like couldn't stop crying. So to me, it felt like depression a bit. And I just felt like it wasn't me. Like I felt like I was happy, but yet emotionally, I kind of felt torn and it just felt like I yeah, just wasn't my true self. It was, it's so hard to explain that feeling. And so at the time 
I had been on birth control for probably eight years at that point, kind of just going on it because everyone else does type of thing being like, Oh, my doctor says this is helpful. And so that's when I really started to look into who am I without this pill that I'm taking every day? That was one question I had. And I wondered if that was playing into how I was feeling. And so I went to the doctor that I was seeing at the time and kind of brought up my concerns. I also was a bit pressured because this doctor was a female and basically just told me nothing's wrong. You're totally fine. And there's nothing you can do about it. And you definitely should not stop taking your birth control. And I remember just leaving feeling like, okay, I'm not being heard. I'm definitely not okay. And I do have some mental health issues in my family. So I kind of thought like, is this kicking in for me now? Like, you know, I was worried about that, but she just seemed to kind of dismiss it and then be like, there's no, there's really nothing you can do. Like keep doing what you're doing. And I just wasn't having that because I knew I wasn't truly happy or myself. And it was starting to take a relationship that I had and work, you know? And so that was the moment that I personally started to look into functional uh, lab work, like looking at my hormones. I did a few of the Dutch tests to look at hormones and worked with people in the Austin area, found one doctor specifically that at the time, you know, was really expensive for me, you know, investing that money in the lab and then the consultation and then the supplements that they give you and all of that. It was a hard choice to make, but I kind of felt like I have to make this investment now. Otherwise, I'm I'm going to stay in this place. So it was worth that investment in my health and in my future to do it. And that was kind of where it was life changing for me starting there. It was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, cut out coffee for a while and start focusing on a little more of kind of like Dr. Cabral talked about, like the de stress protocol is, is a little bit of what I was implementing at that time of like, let me pull back on, you know, the hard workouts as often as I was. And let me um, focus a bit more on recovery more days. And um, I just started to notice positive changes over, you know, as you know, not necessarily right away, but course of a couple months. And that was exciting to me. And so that's what really got me into wanting to be an advocate for and wanting to learn more about not only women's health, but just everyone's health in general about getting to a root cause of something and not just you know, I think in integrative health, we learn like there's a place for all types of doctors, right? But I think also sometimes we need to seek other opinions and other types of doctors to get the answers that we're truly looking for. And that was something that really helped me. So that's what got me into, I would say, more of like the integrative health approach was really going down that path for about three years for me trying to like heal my hormones, I guess is how I would describe that. Um, And, you know, I just slowly but surely got happier and healthier and felt better and it was all working for me. And so that just, again, was like, okay, what courses can I take? And I found IHP through Mind Pump, which was a podcast that I listen to often for trainers or people that are into health and fitness. And so that's where I first heard of um, Stephen Cabral. And so I just knew immediately as like a lifelong learner and someone who loves to take certifications and just learn for myself, but also try to implement that with myself and with the clients that I serve to better serve them. Yeah, I talked to my husband and I was like, hey, I think this is something that's not only great for me and just something that I love learning about. And if I'm going to spend all that time learning about it, might as well pay for a certification that I could potentially use. Uh, But also for our business, we run our own business together, the health and wellness business called Durable Athlete. And so we've been able to use what I've learned along the way and kind of collaborate together to give our clients the best possible results. Because again, if you're just training for an hour in the gym, often you're, you're just like scratching the surface of what you could potentially do. So yeah, I think just that's kind of where my story started with my own struggles and then really seeking out a different type of approach and looking um, at functional medicine a bit deeper for myself and being able to heal myself from the inside out. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it, it's crazy that, you know, you, and you kind of highlighted this when you were telling the story that a female doctor, I could see how like a male doctor, you know, who doesn't like know how, you know, the, mm-hmm. how get emotions and cycles and hormones can be right. But to have a female doctor kind of dismiss, like, I'm not feeling well, like what I think it, it's, uh, it speaks volumes to where the gaps are with conventional Mm -hmm. medicine, specifically in that like OBGYN um, world where they're just using like birth control basically to solve 
uh, honestly, every problem, like whether it's heavy periods, emotions, you name it, like it's birth control is the, the only option. And for so many women, they just, nobody has ever told, and most women use it at an age where like, they're not in the process of, you know, yeah. really connecting the dots or asking questions. They're not like, Hey, these are the things that it could cause. Like it might cause gut and based imbalances. It might, I mean, they give you like the big picture major risks or like they give you the pamphlet and tell you to read it, but like, who's going to do that at 18? I don't even remember that though. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't right. remember it, that being a thing. So it, yeah. And definitely. it's kind of just like, well, if it's that bad, nope, not everybody would be doing it. So like, yeah. I'll just give it a, sh- give it a shot. And then when you kind of think you want to come off of it, they're like, oh no, don't, don't do that honestly, because my opinion, like they don't know how to support women in coming off of it. Right. It's like, come off of it when you want to get pregnant and hopefully your pregnancy hormones will take over at that point. And if they don't, well, we'll just go through IVF and you kind of just stay stuck in their system. And being able to question that is a, a pretty powerful thing. And I think more women are starting to do it thanks to kind of integrative health taking, um, taking over. But also to another thing I wanted to highlight is it's, I think so. We were just actually having this conversation on an internal meeting at Equal Life with all the coaches because one of um, my colleagues had a client who we were trying to kind of discuss her, discuss suggestions for. Her, and she's doing like everything like on paper. She's like exercising, she's eating right. She's, but her, her labs are showing major stress. Well, she's mm-hmm. over exercising and she's too stressed about like her health and wellness. Yes. And, you can overdo <laughs> yeah. you can overdo a good thing just as much as you can underdo right a bad thing and a lot of people are kind of using it as a distraction or a numbing tool sometimes the exercise or even like the work you know of working from 6 to 8 it's you know kind of maybe like a little bit of this perfectionist or overachiever and so getting yeah. curious about like why am i doing this and how is it affecting my health and wellness even if it like looks like you're doing the right and I'm using air quotes for people who are listening, um, yes. not watching the right thing. And it, sometimes it can still be that you're doing too much. Absolutely. And that was, I think, exactly where I was because I was doing a lot of the right things. But and when I first got my test, I remember one of the things that I noticed was cortisol was going back up at nighttime. And that was a, a big sign to me of like, no wonder I'm getting anxious right before bed. Well, cortisol is spiking right before bed. So I'm feeling this anxious energy before I go to bed. And so I think that was super helpful. And then looking at like, okay, your testosterone is really low. And for as much as I was training, it was like, yeah, I've always kind of wondered why I'm like, my physique doesn't quite match up with, again, all of the training that I'm doing and the nutrition and all the things. It was like kind of connecting these dots between how I was feeling or things I was noticing. And then the the actual reason behind them was super helpful. And having that information truly helps you take those next steps and, and where to go. Cause without those labs, I just feel like you're, you're guessing, right? Like you're like, okay, I think this might work, but having the labs really reminded me daily of why I was changing, right? Why I was maybe trying to like pull back a little bit on the hours at work or focus a little bit more on, I was already doing recovery workouts and I was very into the recovery space. But again, I think the other days it was just too much all around. So being able to like peel back where I could, yeah, I just started to notice that I was better. And again, even just cutting out caffeine for a while, I wasn't a big coffee drinker, but that was eye opening to me. I was like, I'll have like a cup or two in the morning, but just going almost a full year with either no coffee or just decaf. Like I would notice when I had a few cups, I would just start shaking or like clenching my jaw. Like it would make me more anxious. And so, you know, that was something that all of those things just start to build more awareness around everything. And that's where I feel like growth truly happens is when we're more aware of all the little things, like the little domino effect of what we're doing, right. Of our habits. So yeah, that has been life-changing for me. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think you you kind of nailed the, the biggest benefit of the functional medicine tests, in my opinion, is it allows the client to see in black and white. It's not your Mm -hmm. opinion, right? There's some people who could come to me and I could say, Hey, listen, with knowing without a shadow of a doubt, like you are exercising too much, you're going too fast, you're drinking too much caffeine. And some people will go, cool, I trust you. I'll change all those things. But most people, um, their skeptical nature might come into play and they might be like, yeah, but like, I'm not, I don't feel stressed. Right. But seeing those cortisol elevations at night, 
it's like, I, it's not my opinion. I'm not making it up. There's the lab, black and white, <laughs> your saliva. <laughs> um, yes. That's and they're sure. able to go, okay, I get it. Like I'll change it. And so the, the lab tests really offer that like quantitative proof that something is not right. And if you kind of keep going down this road, you're going to keep getting more of what you've already gotten. Yeah. And the other things that really stuck out, I always, I've always wanted to be a mom. So I started to get to the point where I was worried about, you know, at what point would I be able to have healthy enough hormones to conceive and would I be able to, and, you know, did I do any harm to my body by being super stressed or being on birth control for so long? And so that kind of became a goal, a goal of mine was like getting myself to the place of being as healthy as possible to potentially bring another life into the world. That was definitely a goal. Um, although it wasn't like, you know, super, it wasn't something that we wanted immediately, but it was just something I knew I wanted down the road. Um, I will say that the book Beyond the Pill, that was super helpful. And um, I think it's the Women's Guide to Hormonal Harmony. Those are pretty helpful in just learning more about birth control and coming off of it and kind of balancing out your body. Um, obviously, if you're kind of into IHP at this point, all of the, the de-stress protocols, uh, that's extremely helpful. A lot of it goes back to, I feel like all the things I've read and learned over time, a lot of it just goes back to lowering stress in the body. Mm -hmm. Like so much of it goes back to lowering stress. Um, and so I think that that's a big thing, but what? I was just going to say, because it's a simple, I always tell my clients, regardless of whether or not you actually want to conceive, if you want healthy hormones, your body has to perceive that it is a safe environment for pregnancy. Your hormones mm -hmm. are not meant to be there really for any other reason than for your body to, to conceive and get pregnant and give birth. Are children for everyone? No. But if someone wants a harmonizing hormonal balance, it has to be that the body feels safe enough to ovulate, ovulate well, produce progesterone in response to that ovulation. And if it doesn't feel safe enough to do that because there's too much stress, that's when hormones go out of balance. And that's when you get hormonal based symptoms. It's very simple. Um, and I feel like so many times it's like overcomplicated, um, in, in a lot of ways, but when women kind of hear it that way, I feel like they can kind of take the stress aspect seriously. Yes. And I wish that was said more often, you know, again, I think now if you kind of search for it, you'll find that, but it's something that I wish. I would have been told even from a younger age, you know, like, um, and I think that we're moving in that direction. And now with the ability to share information and more integrative health practitioners and people that are interested in holistic health, um, I think we'll, we'll get there, which is exciting. Because another thing that I just remember, it, it just stuck with me is, again, having some family members that have um, depression or they're bipolar, like these things are affecting a lot of people. And I remember thinking, I could have easily just been put on an antidepressant, you know, yeah, without, and, and the, yeah, that might be needed. So I'm not giving medical advice at all. Like that might be needed for people. I, I just remember thinking like, okay, I very well could have been just given some anti-anxiety medication or depression medication and never have looked at, oh, it's actually the, your hormones and stress. And we have other ways to solve that. Um, and so that kind of became a driving factor too, for being able to, to help others. Cause I feel like that's a big thing that our society is going through. Um, and I think it's, there's a lot of different reasons, but, but yeah, I think I want to help people understand that there are natural things we can do and certain supplements we can take where you're not, you don't have to be on medication forever. It's not just something that you're kind of like stuck with, you know, hopefully there are things we can do to uh, positively impact that. Cause I've been there, you know, like I, I've kind of come out on the other side. So at least for me, that is my own experience. Yes. Yeah. And I think it honestly can go back to like the fact that we live in this instant gratification culture. It's like, you have anxiety. Do you want it to go away right now? Here you go. Take this. Do you have painful periods and hormones that like hormonal symptoms that you want to go away? Here, take birth control. And nobody, everybody's playing the short game, right? They're playing the, the, game to fix everything right now. And no one's thinking about, okay, no one sits down and asks you at 18 when they put you on birth control, like, do you want to be a mom someday? Okay. Well, mm -hmm. if you do want to conceive at some point, these are the potential challenges that you might face coming off of birth control once you were to want to conceive, but like it's out of sight, out of mind. 
And here, just take this now, and then we'll solve the next problem when it comes rolling down the hill. And it's honestly, in my opinion, just a fallout from the society that we're living in. And like the constant just need for the next hit of gratification. I completely agree. And when people ask me, because people ask me like, well, how long did it take you to feel better? And in some way, sure, I noticed a positive change in a month or two or three, but truly I feel like it took like three years. Mm-hmm. You know, like kind of looking back at it, you know, there was progress along the way, which I think when you're in that situation, you have to celebrate the wins along the way to keep you going. Right. But yeah, it wasn't something like, oh yeah, a week later I felt fine. Like in reality, it took a few years to really feel like I was thriving, you know, and, and, uh, test again, looking at like, okay, everything's normal and healthy and balanced and optimal, however you want to look at it. And so yeah, I will say that it's totally worth it, but it isn't a quick fix often, right? Like you have to put in the time and the effort. Um, but it, again, it is more than worth it, I think. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Uh, what I would love to do is switch gears a little bit uh, and talk about, because I know um, if you're still kind of tied into on it and you have your own business and you're doing kind of like functional stuff and mobility, Uh, I would love for you to share with our listeners a little bit about kind of what your belief is as far as like networking is concerned, um, having like a community that you're a part of and having like your own little, you know, specialty, how that's kind of helped grow your business, because it sounds like it's been a pretty integral part of what you and your husband are doing. And I think a lot of up and coming coaches might think that like, you have to have a huge social media following and like, in-person relationships aren't as impactful, but I would love for you to uh, give your take on, on how that's um, played out in your, your business. Yes. So let's see. My husband and I both worked at a gym here in Austin called On It. And On It was a pretty popular place. It, it still is, I think, but it has changed quite a bit. Um, I will say like from when everything kind of shut down in 2020 and just, you know, management has changed and different things. But either way, before that, they had a really popular education system that people would come into because they were known for like the steel maces and steel clubs and kettlebell certs. And then what my husband and I were really into was the durability side, which is more of the longevity, joint by joint mobility, you know, all of the recovery tools. And so people were coming from all over. And so networking was a huge piece of our business then. And one reason that we really liked on it too is we were just able to meet people from different backgrounds. Um, different coaching backgrounds coming from different states. And so that definitely helps and did help when we went off on our own. Um, You know, when we were there, I think, again, you make it a point to just connect with as many members as possible and as many people as possible. I think that's just kind of who we are. I naturally love talking to people and meeting people and learning about them. So I think that for me, it comes pretty easily. I think for my husband, that was a little more taxing for him energy wise. He was like more introverted, although he's such a great coach and would lead these certifications. He would just want to like go home where I'd want to go like hang out with the people after too. You know, like I was, I was totally fine with more networking. Um, But in hindsight, the networking plus social media, you know, we don't have a huge social media following. We have a decent amount, I would say. And it started by just posting daily, like, you know, it would be one drill a day that we were using with a client or with ourselves, or we tried to keep it very educational right? Like that was kind of our goal is again, going back to just, we want to help people. So on it was kind of big on that too. They wanted us to post more. And so I think through social media and in-person networking and relationships, when the gym closed down in 2020, we got a call like the next day from a lady that we had met who worked for the junior MBA overseas. And she found us through social media and then came and worked with us at on it at the time. Um, and that led to a three month opportunity of filming body weight and basketball workouts at home for the next three months. So it was like the gym shut down. We're kind of on our own. The next day, you know, people knew us as like the mobility and we both played basketball and my husband was training NBA players at the time. So they knew we were tied to basketball as well. And so, yeah, they were just like, you guys seem perfect for this. We need at home body weight workouts along with basketball workouts. And then like a kind of mindfulness meditation day, which I would incorporate in my classes. And so, yeah, I feel like networking just led us to that next job, you know? And so it's a super important piece. And you could look at networking as 
we do free community events every month in the Austin area to meet new people and to bring our community together for people who maybe aren't working with us one-on-one. You know, we offer free events. I'm still coaching a few classes at different gyms in Austin, purely out of being able to stay in the community and meet people face-to-face and talk to them. We do a lot on social media. Um, and I think that has, has definitely helped us and our business grow are those connections. I think people truly want to feel connected to you. And then even if it's not those people paying for the one-on-one work with you, they're recommending us to other people. That is how most people come to us. Sure, we get some people off of social media, but I feel like more often than not, it's actually word of mouth or someone knows someone, you know what I mean? Or they've, they've worked with us at this class or they came to a community event and they heard our story and then they reached out. So we definitely take advantage of offering our services for free or going out and meeting people as often as we can because we know how that has really helped us build our own business. Yes. Yeah. I think it's so important to kind of not forget that that is like how I think we're hardwired as human beings, right? To like seek out that connection and feel like, you know, just that word of mouth or like, I would feel way better working with someone that I know has worked with somebody else and what their results were, right? Rather than just like, I think everybody can get so caught up in like the social media aspect of it. And like, I need to have a big following to get clients. And I've had other uh, guests on the show that talk about like, yeah, they do have big followings on social media, but that's like not where their clients necessarily come from, right? Or maybe Mm -hmm. some do, but it's really the word of mouth. And like you said, the, you know, offering free talks at community events or just meeting people, um, allows you to reach others, right? And maybe like the person that you spoke, who heard you spoke, doesn't have the resources to hire you or doesn't really need your services, but they're like, oh my gosh, my sister totally like needs this, right? And then they tell their sister about it, right? You never know like what kind of ripple it's going to to give. And so um, kind of being open with all streams of, you know, communication and outreach and whatnot. Yes, I mean, we've had... We do like corporate health and wellness events as well, something that people have asked us to do. And a lot of those have come from, again, the classes that we're offering for free and someone coming in and being like, oh, I feel like my office could really use this. Do you guys do health and wellness for corporate events? You know, and it's like, yes, we can come in and lead, you know, a mobility session of things you guys could do at your desk or whatever it may be and talk about certain lifestyle factors that could be beneficial for people who are sitting inside at a desk all day. And so... Uh, yeah, I just think networking, being able to offer your services, at least in, in our case, our free community events, mine are not always like nutrition talks. I could be doing that. Ours are more on the movement side of things that we kind of do together, but we'll speak to the other offerings that we have. And yeah, I feel like every time after those, we have people reach out to us that are interested in talking to us about our services. And I think they just get that face-to-face connection that is so different than just posting something on social media because there is a lot on social media and it can be a really useful tool. Um, but I think nothing beats face-to-face community and contact with people. Yes. Yeah. I completely agree. I think you kind of remember things in a different way too, right? Um, because like there's this ever, you know, changing on social media, you can kind of be like, wait, I don't remember who said that. Like I listened to so many people talk today, Mm -hmm. so many accounts but someone will remember the event that they went to at such and such a place and who they heard speak and what was it about. Right. And so there's a lot more of that, like memory attached to it uh, as well. Yeah. I think it's the same with podcasts. I think a lot of, you know, thinking about signing up for the IHP, IHP level one and level two was because I was hearing Dr. Stephen Cabral talk on the mind bump podcast a few times it wasn't just like one video on social media. And then I was like, Oh, I'm sold. You know, maybe that works for some people, but it was, it was through hearing him speak, which I feel like, again, if you're doing something in person, you're getting that person's energy. You're hearing them speak longer than 30 seconds, you know, um, because social media sometimes is just so short, you know, and it can be entertaining. It can be educational for sure. But I think people want to feel more of a connection to you and that's why they want to work with you. Yes. Yeah. And we've talked about that so much on this podcast, how oftentimes it's not all it's, I would say more often than not, it's not even necessarily what you know, right. But it's the trust, it's the likability, it's the relatability, the vulnerability of how somebody feels in your presence, Mm -hmm. and how they're able to kind of, because a lot of the kind of work that we do is like heart centered work. And you do have to kind of 
be in a position with somebody that you do like, know, and trust, right? That whole like, know, and trust factor. And like you said, you can get that feeling much easier in person with somebody or yes, on like a more extended podcast, then sometimes you might be able to get through a social media account or, or whatnot. And you know, too, that people that are attending some of maybe the stuff that you've, you've talked um, about in person, like those are people that are truly invested in their health and wellness. If they're Mm -hmm. going to things like that, that's something that's important to them. Those are things that they are always kind of looking out for versus, you know, it might be just, you never really know who's, who's listening and, and following your social media account. That's so true. I do feel like that. It's like those people are going to kind of gravitate towards, especially in, you know, what we're offering are often like recovery day workouts. Like sometimes we'll do just the mobility. We'll do breath work. Um, last time we had a, a, basically one of our coaches who runs like a really organic and I guess like, I don't know. It's a food prep service, but they use all high quality ingredients. Him and his mom do it. So they were there offering like organic bone broth and some ceviche. And we had a cold plunge person there. And so it's all around kind of like the health and wellness. So if someone's coming to that event, then yes, I think they are interested in wanting to improve their health in some capacity. So yeah, you kind of do, uh, you have the ability to speak to those people who you know are already interested in a little bit of what you're doing. Right. And so well, for anybody out there listening, I think that that has been a big help for us um, in growing our business. And I think the one thing we get all the time is people are always just like, you guys just are so authentic. Like we really are. We're not, we're not really trying to sell people. We're not trying to make our posts super fancy on social media. Like that might be better for business. Don't get me wrong, but I just feel like that's not who we are. We try to just keep it as authentic as possible. And those are the type of clients though that we want. So that's who we get to. And so it, it works out for us and for them, I think. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if someone's listening and they kind of want to learn more or connect with you, um, where are all the places that you show up, whether it be social media, websites, any of that? Yeah. So our website is durableathletes.com. We have an app uh, that people can access. Actually, the first two weeks are free. It's a lot of mobility and recovery techniques on the app. Um, you can find that either through the website or at the app store, just called Durable Athlete. And then on social media, we have our Durable Athlete page. And then mine is natalie.pigsy. My now name, married to my husband now, is Placencia. But I just left it as Higby. But in the kind of information, you'll see Natalie Placencia. And then Christian Placencia is my husband. But his name is spelled without an H. But Christian Placencia, he posts a bunch of super helpful stuff as well. He's amazing. Um, so I feel like we are most active on Instagram and then really through our website and app, people can also work with us or access what we do. That's great. Thank you so much for being a guest on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Uh, this was such a wonderful interview. I appreciate everything that you shared with us um, and um, I wish you well. Yes, thank you so much. I, it was my pleasure. I hope to be back someday in the future. Great, thank you so much, Natalie. Take care.